just in your early look, what kind of options will you have at 19? Uh, well, as we kind of making our way through the process here, uh, but I, I, at 19, I still think that we have a player that the staff are, are pretty excited about. Um, and there's probably going to be uh, a few options at that point in time. So, so the guys are still battling it out on, on how, who goes ahead. But, there, but there's still some, some pretty good options there at 19. Uh, based, you know, 19, you kinda, it slides back and you're kind of thinking, well, you know, what are you really going to get? But I, I still believe at 19 we're going to get a guy that the, the staff are, are really happy about. Like, did you kind of see the situation where is and people always ask this stuff? Trying, I mean, is it a deep draft, or do you feel like you're in a good position there? Are you? Yeah. Uh, but are you also glad to know where you're picking? Well, I mean, obviously, if we would have bumped up one or two, uh, yeah. you know, with Columbus's help, that would have been better. But uh, you know, I would just, I, I would just happy that we didn't, you know, Columbus didn't advance, we didn't fall because that's a, that's a pretty, uh, that's a pretty long drop. Uh, if Columbus gets into the last four, so uh, so 19 is good. We're, we're, you know we're comfortable with that. I mean, as far as the depth of the draft, um, you know I, I don't want to say that it's it's the thin draft because that's not fair. There's players that come out of every draft at some point in time. So um, it, for us, it's just a matter of working through and identify the players we really like and why we like them um, and identify players that we feel are going to make the Ottawa Senators better. So uh, we'll find some players, you know, like uh, the, you know, the staff, I think historically, if you take a look, um, we've had pretty good success uh, in the middle rounds, uh, you know, and obviously sometimes, uh, like, you know, if you go back to 2015, that was a pretty uh, pretty good haul for us, um, and it doesn't happen all the time. But then you you know you work through, and then guys like Batherson was a fourth rounder, and you know the Gruden kid we got in the mid rounds last year, and the Crookshank. Kid, I mean, so uh, I think you know we, we're able to find uh, the guys find some good prospects in the middle round. So um, I'm not you know I'm not overly concerned at this point in time whether it's deep or not deep. I think our guys will find some players. Consensus is on the top two pretty much, and after that, where are the tiers and the top ten? Yeah, the top three, 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 ten, yeah, yeah, the top two is a, a tier. You know, um, I, I would I would say you know from three to ten is is probably another good a good block of kids, um, and uh, I guess it, depending on the team, uh, it's probably could go a little bit longer than that. But you're you're probably talking somewhere between seven and and ten guys that you know, uh, depending on the team's interest, whether they want to. You know, if they go, I mean, everyone has a different philosophy, right? So somebody, if they really feel like they need a D, somebody's going to have to step up on a D, then they'll step up on a D whenever. But I, at the end of the day, I think there's a block of players there that will just will go in some sort of order. It may not be the exact same as ours, obviously, but it'll be some sort of an order um, in, in the next 10, probably. Is the mentality for this organization picking out the best player available, or you still have specific needs? Yeah, I mean, at 19, you're still gonna. We're still trying to target the best player. Um, we have some beliefs in what we what we think is uh, in a in a player that we want. Um, so as long as we stay true to that, I think uh, at the end of the day, we'll get a, you know we'll get the player that we want. That uh, you know, uh, let's you know we can go back to last year, um, and I know that a lot of you know the, the staff on the outside, and and we're you know keep. Pretty sheltered because we're just going to rinks, but you know Brady Kachuk wasn't necessarily the highest profile pick either, and and you know I don't know how everyone felt felt about it, but um, but our guys did their work, you know, and um, at this point in time, I think Brady was perfect for the Ottawa Senators at the time. So is there another player, you know, like uh, the kid in Montreal is very good too, Kaka Niemi is good, another good player, but. And he, would be, he, you know, he would have been a good player to pick. We would have been happy to get him as well. You're happy with a lot of the kids, but the reality is, is that for the Ottawa Senators and where we're at last year, I think Brady Kachuk was the perfect pick for the Ottawa Senators. And that, you know, I have to give credit to our staff uh, that they did that. You know, and uh, you know, and obviously Pierre has to be in agreement with that as well, which he was. Uh, and uh, so that that makes the decision a little bit easier. And then obviously this year, um, you know, he, he was a big part of of our team and it'll be a big part going forward. How much, when, how much input did you guys have as scouts in making that decision to use the number four pick last year compared to, you know what, let's pass it on to Colorado and take our chances at maybe being number one next year? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously I've become the spokesperson for the staff. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I talked to our guys um, 
on a regular basis. So I, I know how we feel, you know, and how we felt about it at the time. Um, so I had those conversations with Pierre and, and what our thoughts were at the time. Um, we just, you know, we just felt that at the time, uh, a player like Brady Kachuk could be in our in our grasp, and uh, you know, and then obviously, you know, there was a couple other players ahead of him that were pretty good players too. Mm -hmm. You know, Zvechnikov is a pretty good player, and Dalene, obviously, those are those are pretty good players. And obviously, we knew we'd be at four. Chances are, Dalene wasn't going to be there, but you know, we didn't know how Carolina was going to go, you know. So, so there's, there was a few options there, and the level of the player that was there, I think it would be hard to, to say, oh, let's wait till next year and see, um, because a lot of things can change over mm -hmm. the period, course of the year. And uh, even right now, you know, like uh, there's even discussions going on about Kako and Hughes by some people, you know. And uh, But if you would have went back a year ago, you probably, yeah. you know, I don't think there was any real discussion about that. Um, and, and so, so a lot of things, you know, a lot of things change in 12 months. Uh, um, you know, we, we talk about that all the time. We'll, we, you know, we put together an underage list as well uh, to try to get, gauge for the following yeah. year. Um, and you know, and our guys do a pretty good job of, of identifying the top end talent, but it, it, it changes a lot over the 12 months. So uh, it's more to give us an idea of how much depth there is in the draft, and not necessarily yeah. where they're where they're placed. So. Uh, I to get the feeling maybe you think that a guy like Kachuk doesn't come along very often either, right? Like the impact he made. Well, you know, what's interesting is that, you know, um, his eight goals in college scares people, right? Um, and uh, and there are some, you know, s some analytic numbers that would suggest that that wasn't a great pick. Um, for us, you know, you don't want to use some of those, that bit of information as a tool, you know, and uh, and not the whole... You know, base your whole decision on that, and uh, so you know, how do you how do you gauge someone's someone's heart and someone's compete and someone's leadership uh, by a number? That's a difficult thing to do. So there's a little a lot more digging that has to go into that, and a lot more legwork that has to go into that um, to use to have the full picture, and um, and so that's a little bit how we go about our business um, at this point in time, and uh, I guess. Uh, as long as uh, they want to keep me around and I'm in charge, uh, that's that's what we'll do. It's more, it's, it, you know, there's there's just a lot of factors that I think you have to take into play when you uh, take into consideration when you make a decision that big. Why, why were you not afraid of that eight goal? Because a lot of people were. Yeah. Um, well, the biggest thing for us is that it, when you go to the game, um, his centerman was Jordan Greenway. And Jordan Greenway is not a centerman. Right. I think everybody aware that Jordan Green, Greenway is not a center. He's a power forward. Um, he was the centerman, and Brady was the winger, uh, and Brady became a setup guy for Jordan Greenway, even though the, Jordan played in the center, uh, center ice position. So, so the, the the ability for that player, the maturity to be able to take on maybe a little different role than he had in the past, um, uh, we like that, and because that, that means he's an adaptable player, and he, you know, whatever the situation is, he's able to contribute. And uh, I think we saw that with Brady. As the year went on, that that, that doesn't really matter what's going on. Um, if you want to get into the fight, he'll get into the fight. And if you don't want to get into the fight, he's going to drag you along. Um, you know. Uh, but at the same time, you know, uh, he's going to be right there, willing to push a puck in the you know into the net, and around the net area, he's not scared to make those little plays. So, which is what he did at BU. You know, he made those little plays out to Jordan Greenway. So, you know, um, at the end of the day. Uh, you know, the eight goals, t you take that into consideration, of course. But at the end of the day, the big picture, when you look at everything put together, uh, just that's that's how we came to our conclusion. So. How happy are you with the development of your second first round pick from last year? Bernard Docker, um, well, you know, I, I, I think barring any kind of major uh, setback, I would I would say he, he's, uh, he's a strong candidate to be, make the World Junior Team next year for sure. Um, he, I mean, he he took on a big role at North Dakota last year, which not uh, a lot of players are able to do typically at, at North Dakota. I mean, if you look at Christian Willannon, uh, Christian Willannon's ice time was monitored pretty closely in his first year at North Dakota, and then it's a little bit more in his second year, more in his third year. Uh, where Bernard Docker, just a, a good all-around player, uh, and he's a smart kid, and he's a mature kid, um, so he's able to do a lot of things for them, and. Um, and so we, we were really happy with his progress this year. And I mean, quite honestly, going to North Dakota and what he was able to do, I mean, we couldn't really ask for more you know, from the kid. 
because um, at the end of the day, still he went. You know, we drafted him in a tier two hockey, and and uh, he's college, and you know, he's an eighteen year old kid playing with a lot of older kids. You know, basically young younger men. So um, so we thought he handled that responsibility quite well, and and he'll continue to pro uh, progress. We'll bring him into development camp, and uh, we'll continue to work with him. Um, you know, uh, Sean Donovan and Chris Kelly stayed pretty close. You know, pretty uh, in contact with him on a regular basis, and stayed on top of things, and were helpful from the outside. And we stayed in communication with their coaching staff, and um, and I think that's uh, that's an important piece. Once we draft them, we we have to stay on top of it because development's extremely important. On the year like this year, where um, there's a big consensus past, you know, after a certain number of players, are there certain qualities that you and your staff are, are targeting or looking for? Uh, not necessarily. I think I, every draft kind of plays itself out a little bit differently. So you have to kind of you kind of have to roll with the punches a little bit uh, during the draft. Uh, and there's always some uh, you know a couple of picks that you're are kind of off the board a little bit uh, and from kind of the general consensus. So uh, so really for us, I, I think we just kind of have to roll, especially when you're picking a little bit later. That you have a lot less control over what's happening. So uh, you know. It's, you know, and so we'll see what happens at 19. Like, uh, you know, last year, we, you know, uh, we were at 22. You, you pushed back a few spots, and, and we were able to get Bernard Docker and Ty Connick out of that. Um, so th we, and we feel that's two pretty solid defensemen for moving back only a few, a few picks. Uh, so those things happen, and, and you know, uh, you're, you're willing to, to entertain those things. But uh, until it draws a little closer, it's tough, uh, it's tough to make those calls. Does having it, two second round picks help being possibly make moving up? Yeah, well, it's going to give us some flexibility, and, and it gives us uh, an opportunity to be in on some things that uh, that are happening as far as moving up or down in the draft. Um, so teams that are looking, uh, maybe uh, you know, maybe are willing to move back, um, but maybe we want to move up for someone that we really you know feel strongly about. Then it gives us those assets to to to, to do that. We have so many picks over the next. Two, I mean, it's only it's seven this year, which is the, kind of the normal number, and and, and there's so many more next year um, that I think uh, Pierre has some flexibility at his disposal at this point in time, and and so uh, that's part of this week, you know, along with producing a list, which is a, a long process. Uh, that's another thing that we we do is we have to discuss our our level of interest and where the guys are comfortable, you know, making the moves if we have to make the moves or making uh, recommendations to Pierre, um, you know, uh, which is, you know, that, that's kind of how we typically go about it. But, um, you know, we want to be ready for any kind of a scenario. And I, and I, I have to have a, an understanding and, and a comfort level with where the guys are so that Pierre and I can have, uh, you know, good conversations about what, what we want to do and, and what the possibilities are team is looking for a head coach, and your brother has been interviewed for that. Uh, how hard is it for you to stay out of that uh, conversation? Well, not really hard, because the reality is, is that's not, not, not my department. Um, you know, the only thing I can say is that, uh, you know, I, despite being my brother, I think he did a pretty good job down in Belleville this year. Um, I think our prospects got better, and that's all I can be really worried about. But uh, we feel like our younger players have made strides. Uh, under him, and I, you know, I think the the structure down there that they have in place uh, seemed to, to you know be good for a lot of players. That a lot of you know our younger players took a step forward, and from you know from the scouting staff, I mean that's all we want, right? We want to make sure that once they move on, that they continue to become the players that we project them to be, and uh, and uh, you know I think that was that was good this year. So um, so we're happy with that part. When you leave here, how many names will you have on your list? And what kind of list will you have put together? And obviously, it's not the final list because no, I, I mean it's going to vary here because we'll, we'll we'll go heavy on numbers before we leave, but moving forward, like you know, uh, obviously um, there's still a few you know a few players still playing in the, the Memorial Cup, and then um, we also have the combine that we have to go to and and see um, you know. I, Typically, there's 104, I think, or 105 players they they um, they, they they invite, and, and we'll do 77, 78, 80 interviews um, all week long, and and uh, then they do the physical testing. So I make sure that I'll work uh, closely with Chris Schwartz and his guys to you know, on the, on that part, so we can acquire that information. Um, so that I think you know, and, and then we'll, we'll take all that information and and. Probably pare it down a little bit after that, um, 
because, like I said, we'll go top heavy now, but then we'll find out information here over the next little while that'll allow us to, to con you know, control the list a little bit better. How much healthy discussion is there in there about when you when you sit down to do your list? Uh, well, it's it's just, uh, the guys get pretty fired up. Um, mm -hmm. There's been some, there's some, some pretty good battles here over the last few days, um, and you know that, that part's good because now, you know, the passion's there. The, the guys, you know, the, the staff, they they, they want to pick the best player for the Ottawa <laughs> Centers, and and in order for the Ottawa Centers to get better, we have to do that, and and uh, they like being a part of that. They want to be, they want to contribute, and and so when they show that fire, you know, I encourage it, and as long as it's, uh, you know. As long as it's a respectful, uh, in a respectful manner, which they, you know, very good with that, uh, we battle it out. And some players take a little longer to figure out who, where they go, and, and others, it's a lot easier. So, like so much of this rebuild is based on this, these two days. Is it hard to overstate the importance of what you guys do on those two days too? You, you're talking about the two days as the draft, the draft of yeah. the draft itself. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's two days, but it's, you know, it's it's 363 days of work. I mean, uh, there's not a lot of days off, uh, and the, you know, the guys are pounding it hard to to make sure that each league is. We have a list from uh, from there that we can, you know, we're happy with, and we have them in the right order so that we can eventually pull it all together to make uh, one final list. But it's, uh, you know, this week is uh, in itself is just a lot of work. Putting this list together because uh, there's a lot of pieces to putting that list together. It's not throwing names out and let's you know see where it sticks on the wall. Uh, there's a process that we follow each you know and each day we kind of work through each of the leagues and and we're trying to 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 bring it into into some sort of a, a manageable list that makes sense um, uh, and make sure we get them in the right s spots. But it's uh, like I said, it's 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 not just throwing some names on a list it's a you know the, it's a long it's a it's a long process so you know we arrive Sunday night we start work Monday at one o'clock um, we're Thursday morning and you know at, at this point in time um, we have you know I don't know probably 25 hours of labor put in uh, just you know over these last few days uh, just putting a list together and so we'll continue to pound away and until we're comfortable with it and uh, so you know, uh, it's kind of the unsung heroes kind of guys. You know, they're just in there, and they don't count hours. Uh, they just want to get it right. So this, this might be a little too much detail, but do you? How do you do your list? Do you do guys by rounds, or do you do by no, numbers? No, we st we start off by leagues. For for us, uh, we want to make sure that we have a, a strong WHL list, strong OHL list, a strong Quebec League list, uh, a strong Tier Two list, a uh, strong Swedish list, a Swedish Finnish list. So so we'll we'll go by individual and mm -hmm. and and build those lists um, uh, without uh, without killing each other. Mm -hmm. uh, try to get to some sort of consensus on those, and then and that's pretty broad at that point. So then we we bring it down and we try to get Europe into a list and we try to get North America into a list uh, so that we're comfortable with where those are and then and then pull it all together into one. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll discuss rounds later on, but it's not, you know, it's, it's not, we don't do it that way where we're saying, well, this is round one, these are all the guys we take in round one. That's not how we, that's not how okay. we go about that's it. Fine. Anyway, mm -hmm. so, um, so, you know, when you start counting all the countries and the leagues and then trying to narrow that down, you can see why it's a, a it's a long process and it's it's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun too. So, hmm. you're wrapping up tomorrow? Or no, uh, Sunday. Sunday. Well, Sunday. Sunday. Sunday at noon. Sunday at noon, they're allowed to they're allowed to leave. So. <laughs>